Welcome to the first ever episode of Dream It Real, a podcast for those who dream, brought to you by Coach. I'm your host, Heaven Nagatu. Coach and I have been collaborating on this as a part of their Dream It Real initiative, which is all about supporting the next generation and their dreams for the future. Each week, we're going to be talking to inspiring guests about how they're making their dreams a reality, dreams for themselves, their communities, and the world. So yes, here at Dream It Real, we are all about being real. So of course, we're kicking off the season talking about authenticity. And who better to talk about authenticity than Selena Gomez, okay? I have always, always wanted to be me. But when I was younger, I was very insecure. I started in this industry really young. And I think that you kind of create this other persona of yourself. And then when I started going through real, really difficult things, it allowed me to just have worth. So whether you grew up with her on TV or had one of her songs stuck in your head, I'm looking at you, (laughs) talky-talky, or you just can't stop uh, liking all her posts on Instagram, there's no way you haven't come across Selena Gomez in some way. She's collaborated with Coach for the last two years, from campaigns to fashion shows and even her own capsule collection, and they've been busy getting creative together. But Selena Coach wanted to make sure the collaboration ran deeper than that. That's why when Coach launched the Dream It Real initiative, she was one of the first people to jump on board. Over the years, Selena has made it a priority to stay true to herself and her fans, the Selenators. Hey, y'all, how you doing? I stay in a hive. I love a hive. (laughs) She has been all about staying true to herself, and she had a lot to say about authenticity. Hi, Selena. Hello. I'm so excited you're here. I am very happy to be here. Thank you for joining us for the very first episode of Dream It Real. Yes, Dream It Real. We're dreaming. It's real. I love it. (laughs) So the theme of this week's episode is authenticity. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the word. Sure. Everybody says it. Yeah. (laughs) But it is actually, it's hard to be your authentic self Mm -hmm. or at least to do it in front of millions of other people. (laughs) Yeah. How do you navigate that? How do you deal with that? Um, I think there came a point in my life where I just started not to care Mm. I think when what was that point well it's just because obviously my situation is different and very weird but when I was younger and I was exposed to all of this it was there was like all these pictures and all the things and all I would do is look at the flaws and I think that's hard it is hard and I think that you kind of create this other persona of yourself and then when I started going through real really difficult things Mm. it just it allowed me to have worth you know to know that I'm worthy and that I am who I am and who is that and do I like that person Mm. and I think that it's important for me I don't I don't want to be anything that's a show or a persona Mm. I just don't do you think part of that was the People knowing you from Disney Channel, which is a little more like a polished, like, you know, you can't you have to be kind of perfect. Kind of. Yeah, I think that it was all it's obviously the biggest and greatest thing. One of the greatest things that's happened to me. But yeah, there is this. Shout out to Wizards of Waverly Place. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, I loved it. I think I think for me, it just taught me so much about being a role model Mm. you know that was the first thing that I started so they were very apparent um on being perfect I Mm. guess just making sure that you're being a good influence on people and I'm grateful that I had that opportunity because I understand what a platform means I don't I'm very honest with all the, the things I've been through but I um yeah I don't know I think that it just helped me understand what role model means mm I think especially the the way in, in social media works or just like seeing people on Instagram, I think it amplifies that like that like everybody looks perfect all the time feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is like, you know, everybody is not how they represent themselves on Instagram, right. but still it affects you. Yeah, and I really course. appreciate on your on your Instagram, you've said to the effect like 
women are expected to be resilient and just be strong and like there are no flaws. Mm-hmm. Can you say more about that? Like where what do you mean by that? I just feel like there is so much to Instagram. Um I am I love having a platform to communicate with people. However, I just don't think that it's healthy to spend too much time on it. Oh, yeah. Say Um, that one more time. (laughs) That it is not that healthy to be on it all the time. Because I noticed with me, I got kind of depressed looking at these people who look beautiful and amazing. And it would just, it would get me down a lot. So I just think taking breaks is, is really important. But just know that most of it isn't real. And I hate to say that. I don't mean to be rude, but it's very, it's it's unrealistic in a lot of ways. And I think that for me, I want to protect the youngest generation because they're exposed to so much information. And I feel like that causes a lot of anxiety Mm. at the youngest age. Like I didn't grow up with that. I Mm. had... I had dial-up internet. Like, I didn't... Shout out to dial-up. Yeah. <laughs> I won't try to recreate the sounds. <laughs> no, I know. I was trying to think of it. That's I know. That's literally what I was trying to do. Um, no, but it just... Uh, I just... I think that sometimes people are exposed to too much, and you should really protect what you're seeing, and you should um, be mindful. Be really mindful of how it makes you feel. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. It does. It does feel like we're a little like afraid of talking about our own failures, mm-hmm. and that that shouldn't be a negative thing. We're all, you know, human. <laughs> no, every single person in the entire world has felt that. You know, we are very lucky. There are a lot of people that don't get to experience the things that we get to experience. Um, what's something people might not know about you? I get this question a lot. <laughs> Um, there are a lot of things. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know if people think that like what they see isn't really real or mm-hmm. something, which is fair. Yeah. Fair enough. But it's. It's also just like this. This is me. Mm. Um, I just have Sunday dinners, y'all. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I mean, I. I. I've had like great moments, bad moments, whatever. But it's just. I think what people. I always say this, and maybe I've repeated it too much. But I don't really think that people know my heart because I think that sometimes people may think that I politically say the right thing or I'm safe or I've been trained to speak this way. I don't know how to be trained. Like how (laughs) on earth would somebody be training me to speak things like I I don't even want to explain it. I think that a lot of people don't understand my heart, you know, and I also don't I also don't like that. It, it can be sometimes about appearance, too. Hmm. You know, like I don't I don't really appreciate people judging me on my looks or anything like that. What do you but, what do you mean by that? That it can be about appearance? I just think that the world today with, you know, so much exposure to everything, it it's great to dress up and to feel beautiful and to do those things. But and I'm and I'm I'm flattered when maybe guys are like you're pretty <laughs> hey. no but I am it's just not it, it's just like I I, I would love so, I would just love someone to love me for the person that I am um that's just what's important to me you know mm. when you're when you're scared or overwhelmed or anxious um who's in your head that's wise or who do you talk to how do you overcome it um I tend to talk to people that are older first and that have have a life that I respect Mm. it's it it seeing how someone lives their life is very important and I have some amazing older women in my life that I can talk to that I feel are very wise and have you know really like sustained such a healthy life Mm. So you've worked on a lot of projects, you're EPing, you're um you're doing it all. I'm curious where you find inspiration, what keeps you going creatively. Well, last year I took a lot of time off. I think that I needed a moment to myself because I do feel like I was growing and um changing. So I think my create creativity comes from 
everything from the people around me to music to film to um, art. You know, I think that I pull a lot of inspiration from that and stories that I hear. Um, And also, I just find inspiration in daydreaming. Like, I love being able to think of all the think of all the possibilities in the world and just think about what I would love to represent or cultivate you know I I I think that that's yeah that's where I get my inspiration from I love that are you a vision board type of person I am not actually I which is surprising actually I do I do the Pinterest thing (laughs) yeah so I have that kind of inspiration it's like the easier version of a physical vision vision board board. (laughs) um but yeah I do I have I have things that inspire me awesome um you've had a, a bunch of incredible collaborations including the most ridiculously catchy song ever, Taki Taki. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and that video, I was just rewatching it. It looks so fun and just so like luscious and pretty, yeah, you know? Yeah, thank you. Uh, what was that like? That was fun. That was really fun. I had not danced in years. <laughs> and when I got there, there were these dancers and they're like, do you think you could do some of the moves they're doing? I was like, wait, what? I was like, I don't know. I haven't danced. But it was so liberating because I just... I didn't care. It was almost like, okay, I'm ready. Mm. Like, let's just do this. I love that. Um, so it was fun. It was really, really fun, and everyone was great on set, and everyone that I worked with on the song, they they were wonderful. So it was actually just a big party. It was so fun. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. I care about all of them, but I mostly care about Cardi B, honestly. Yes. <laughs> what was working with Cardi like? <laughs> Cardi is amazing. She is very, very, very strong. Mm. Um, I think that she's just who she is and she was so nice she was nice to everyone and that make you know obviously when you look up to someone or you love someone that's the best thing that you yeah, could see she definitely seems like the most authentic person yes, in the she's, room. Down, she's herself she's everywhere down to earth i, I love, love her i love you cardi yes <laughs> shout out to cardi <laughs> are there people like that or other collaborations you have coming up in the future or that you want you want to happen in the future um sure i think they're There's always possibility for that, but actually working on this new record, I just wanted it to be me, Mm. so uh, all me, Mm. and every stripped down, yeah, and and every song is a story that I've experienced. So, Mm. to you know, to that point, I just think that there's no one that's going to tell my story better than myself. So I I just really wanted to kind of just live with my my story a bit and create it into something that means a lot to me hmm. I love I love that you said you like to dra- daydream a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> I think a lot also about just like where I got my visions of what's possible mm-hmm. uh, I definitely came to like America with the American dream on my back yeah. <laughs> kind of thing you know yeah. um, but I've been thinking a lot about what what the American dream is like for young people now or how they think about it how they define it I'm curious how if you think about that too and how I do. you might define the American dream I do I think that a lot of people don't feel like they can achieve their dream. Yeah. And one of the most important... For a lot of reasons. Right. And the most important thing that I've learned is I've been, you know, insecure in so many situations. I've had people actually tell me um, when I was younger that I would never be strong enough to carry my own show. And I think... Wow, how you feel, how you feel. (laughs) (laughs) I actually don't know who that was, so I'm sorry if that's you. No, don't uh, say sorry to them. (laughs) They should say sorry to you. No, but I I think that it's important to have dreams, Mm. you know? And I think that other people look at other dreams and they want to compare themselves to other people. And I, I don't know. I think that everybody has a purpose and everyone has their own identity and I, I I just want people to believe in in their dreams more mm. I don't want it to seem like a cheesy thing like believe in your dreams it's right, no like right. more believe in yourself and believe in the ability that you can do things that you set your mind to um yeah you, you kind of already touched up on this but I want to explicitly ask what's some advice you tell your younger self or what did you need to hear at that time Gosh, if I knew, <laughs> y'all should have seen the eye roll. <laughs> if I knew what I know it's now, like, oh girl. <laughs> um, no, you know, I think it's I, I, 
am a bl- uh, believer of therapy. Oh, I, yes, same. Yes, yep. yes, go to therapy, <laughs> younger me. Go to therapy sooner, more consistently. Yes. <laughs> so I think that um, I have had opportunities where I kind of reflect on on the younger me. And I think that a lot of the times I wish that I could hug mm. my younger self. Um, just a little hug. Just a little hug, just a little love. But I think that, um, yeah, I... I wish I could have done a lot of things and experienced things maybe a little differently, um, but I, 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 I go to therapy. <laughs> How has your therapy journey been? Therapy is hard. No, it it is, it but is it's hard. amazing. I mean, it's good. Let me yeah, rephrase. Of, therapy is great. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's it just, really is. It's just hard. Like it's one of my friends work. asked me, you know, I I want to start going to therapy, and I said it's good. Like just. Just tell me how your like first experience goes, mm. and she's like, I don't really know, and I just didn't really like it. And I said to her, you have to just give it a month because mm. you can't go in. Definitely not from the first time. No, you can't go in and do that, and and it's hard for people to open up. But for it's, sure. I think that it's just one of the most important things to get to know yourself. Um, not saying everyone in the world has to do it. I'm just saying that. I'll say it. Everybody go to therapy. <laughs> and it should be free. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> me 2020. <laughs> um, yes. I do, but I do. I do think that it's helped me uh, understand myself mm. and my childhood mm. a lot better. Amen. Shout out to therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, you've worked with a bunch of amazing organizations that support young people all around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, why is that so important for you? I've been given this opportunity and I've worked really hard for my job and for my dream but I come from nothing like we didn't even have money to feel fill up the gas tank and we would get you know we'd stop and we would have to figure, figure it, out. it out yeah <laughs> and um oh, been there and so it's it, it to me it um it just it's important for me. There are so many people in life that, I mean, I get overwhelmed. I'll cry because there's so many different parts of the world that people have no idea what they're going through. We complain about things here about, you know, our phone's not working or I don't want to go to school when there are people in the world that are dying for an education, that are wanting to have a life Mm. of their choice of different just different people all over the world that have so much that have so much to offer and they don't feel like they have enough or they don't have enough. I feel you. So I think it's incredibly important to acknowledge what's happening around the world and do as much as you can. And I want to do more. I want to spend my whole life doing that, even when I've maybe stopped doing what I'm doing now. Mm. And I also would love, love, love the generation I'm in and younger to see that, to not just see what's on the highlight on the gram, but to <laughs> maybe see what people are walking through and to maybe just understand that they're, maybe their situation is hard. But one of the biggest things my mom taught me was there are people who are less fortunate and you need to acknowledge them and you should always, always do anything that you can, from clothes to food to any anything. So... That's just been important to me. Mm. I don't do anything unless it has something that I can do to help people. That's amazing. Uh, For all your fans listening, what message would you want to tell them? I love people so much. It hurts. It really does. I, I love people and I believe in people. I, I just, the message, gosh, I want to, I would say so many things, I guess, but. Feel free to take your time. Um, that you're enough. Mm. You're absolutely enough. And if you deal with things that are really difficult, like family issues or anxiety, depression, or substance issues, I just think that you're never far, you're never too far gone. Mm. I really believe that. I think that every person is valuable and important, and we are all equal, and not to... I always just feel like I get cheesy, but it's genuinely from my heart. I care about the world, and I'm the only message I would say is that you're enough, that you are valued, 
that even if you feel absolutely alone, that there are millions of people that feel that way. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage them to get to know who they are. And it's really hard. It's really, really hard. I don't I don't want people to think it's just wave a wand and it's right. gone. I've spent years of my life trying to navigate who I am and overcome mm. so many obstacles. So I don't think it's easy. I just, I believe in people. And I've seen amazing people go through the hardest things. Mm. And it inspires me. And I think that's when... You should take opportunities to hear other people's stories. You know, like I'll go online and I'll listen to some of the greatest people speak about their struggles and some of my favorite actors like experience their troubles and how far they've come. Mm. So I I don't know. I love you guys. Oh, <laughs> I do. Oh. I'm such a sap. For the times you're feeling anxious or a little depressed or low, what's something you can't live without or cheers you up? My friends. Mm. I think it's so important, especially in this generation. I have four, no, sorry, I'm I'm the fourth. <laughs> um, three amazing, amazing friends. And they are they're supportive. They are encouraging. When we when one of us maybe slips or falls, we're not afraid to be honest with each other. Mm. Um, I love a group roast. A yes. healthy roast. Yes, <laughs> we can a get to the funny. Roast. We can do a funny one <laughs> yes, too. Yes, but a little gathering of yes. girl, what you doing? <laughs> um, and I just find that when I'm around other people, or I bring my friends with me to some places, it's just people talk about our friendship. Mm. Um, and I want girls to have that. I really do, because it's it's just so competitive and it's very catty. I've seen a lot of of cattiness, and I just. I think it's so important to have healthy friendships. I really do. I mean, my friends, without a doubt, have saved my life in multiple situations. Mm. And I mean that mm. because they're honest, they're loving, they unconditionally love, they never judge, and they give me sound advice. And and all my friends are different. They, One's real estate, one works in social media, one works in foundations. Like, it's it's... It's just great. We're all so different, but we love each other. Mm. So I think if I feel any of those emotions, they are there, and they come and sit in the bed with me. And they, they talk to me. Love they, a little snuggle. Yeah, it's nice. I think it's 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 important. What was the last healthy roast they gave you? <laughs> let's see. <laughs> She's like, mm, let's go through the catalog. Um, I think okay, this happened. I think I got a little caught up. Because it happens when I'm working and I start second guessing some of the opportunities that I've had. And mm. um, maybe I'm like, I don't think this is good. And, oh, I wish I could have done that. I wish, I wish, I wish. And they had they would kind of stop me and they'd say, you have been given so much. Mm. And that in that moment, you know, it was just like. Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. Like I am extremely, extremely blessed. I have been given so much and it changes the dialogue that I have with myself. So just them just sitting good perspective. with me. It yeah. is. And it's in that, you know, that moment that I was revving myself up to mm. the point where I was going to cry because I feel like I wasn't doing enough or I missed chances on things. In that moment, just them saying you have been given so much and you take care of that but you can't compare you mm. know it just i think that they do that often and and it's amazing that is a very healthy roast yeah yeah so what's next for you i know you might get that a question a lot mm. but i'm curious if there's anything you haven't done yet that you're you're just keen to try or explore a little i want to explore the world because i've been everywhere but i've seen absolutely nothing <laughs> but just just to yeah just to be able to see all different parts of the world. What's next personally for me is to continue to work on myself and my album. I'm excited. Hopefully, you know. What is your word for 2019? I would say intentional. Ooh, mm -hmm. say more. <laughs> I want to be intentional with every moment of my life. Mm. I want to be clear-headed. I want to, from every word I write, to intentional with people that I care about, um, making sure 
that I'm living my life with purpose, that I'm not just wasting my time. You know, I'll say no to things that I just don't feel are worth it. I I want everything in my life to have meaning because um, I've spent so much of my life doing so many things. And now it's at the point where I want to be intentional with my friends, with people, with even just like I'm getting I'm so close to my grandparents, like spending time talking to them, intentionally listening to mm. their stories and just appreciating them, like appreciating the conversations that I'm in and appreciating people around me. So that would be my word for That's 2019. That's so beautiful. I love that. Thanks. Intentional. Yeah. Uh, we have a few audience questions from Coach's social media team. Ooh. Uh, from Iman, we have, what are you looking forward to this year? I'm looking forward to my album. Ooh. Um, and I'm looking forward to spending time alone. Oh, yes. Love I think I'm finally, time. finally, finally at the age where I love being alone. I feel I, that. I, Movie I by yourself, really restaurant by yourself. Yeah. I don't know if you can do that, but I love that. <laughs> I can. A, a smaller private restaurant. <laughs> My security probably. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, we need a security sweep. I would be alone and they'd be, be far away and I would just be alone. But I have done that before, yes. I love alone time. Yeah. Um, from La Bella Figura Que. Ooh. Ooh. I'm in the midst of doing something really challenging and I'm nervous. Suggestions? Mm. No context on what the thing is. <laughs> right, right. I guess that kind of It depends. matters, but. <laughs> um, challenging. Something challenging and you're nervous. I would say step back from it and reflect on what you're doing it for and the purpose of it. Mm. I think it's important to make sure you evaluate what you're doing and that you love it and that it's something that gives you purpose. So I think for me it's just make sure that you believe in the fact that you can do that and and don't be too hard on yourself. I'm so hard on myself. It's so annoying. Same. So I just think that it's important to make sure that you're not being too critical of yourself. Amen. Uh, question from Jackie. What makes you happy? Hey, friends. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Um, no, and also what makes me happy is is making other people happy. Um, especially with my littles. I call them my littles. When they're, they come up to me and they're just so happy and they're so excited, it, it will completely lift my spirits up mm. just to, to know that I made someone smile or to notice someone that maybe other people aren't noticing. I, that that makes me extremely happy. I love and that. my friends. <laughs> Selena, this has been a blast. Oh, thank you. You're such a fun person to chat with. You're fun. Oh, I'll stop it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we really want to thank you for being here and speaking to the theme of authenticity because yeah. it is hard and I know... Um, we're all about the young people, and I'm sure there's a lot to take away for everyone here, though. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah. Hey, like what you hear? Well, discover more about the Coach fam and what the brand is all about at coach.com. Now, let's get back to the show. So now we're at the point of the show where we're going to hear from inspiring young people all across the country chasing their dreams. This week, you'll hear from 16-year-old Lasea. She's a member of her school's dream team at ATC High School in Los Angeles, working with her dream director, Mateo, to make school a place where every student can develop the skills and mindsets to bring their dreams to life. So when we spoke to Lasea, we actually had a little bit of a surprise for her, and we introduced her to Selena Gomez, and she was so hype. It was so beautiful. As you can imagine, she was uh, excited, and we were too. I was definitely inspired by what Lasea had to say, and I hope you are too. But enough of me talking about her. Let's just hear from Lasea herself. My name's Lasea. I'm 16, and I'm from East LA. I think being authentic is being real, and I think it's important to be real, because if you're not yourself, you kind of come off like you're kind of following everyone else. I've definitely been through a lot of things, only being 16. It's crazy right now, currently. There's a divorce going on with my parents, so that's kind of like one of the main struggles that I'm like dealing with. 
it's not so heartbreaking that it's like, oh, my family's being torn apart or, oh, like I'm not going to have this certain figure in my life anymore. It's more just like, okay, what's going to go on now? Like, how am I going to rebuild? Like, what's what is it that I'm going to look forward to? And I definitely think the struggle for me, and it's always been my struggle, is what's your future? It's important to, you know, kind of realize what are you doing with your life right now? But it's also important to kind of see where your life's going. Like, what are you really going to do? Like, what is, what's something that you're passionate about? Because I don't think it's all about, like, getting a job or getting a career. I think it's getting a job or something that's going to make you happy. I would say my biggest dream is to inspire others to go for their dreams, um, to go for their aspirations, to go after the things they want to do. Um, I don't want people to hold back. That's my main goal, to kind of help people not hold back. Singing is one of the ways I like to express myself. It scares me because whenever I sing, I feel like nervous, but I love singing when I'm in the moment of it because it shows like my full emotion. I get my full emotion into projecting my voice out there and kind of giving my message by using my voice. One of my favorite songs to sing is Impossible. I remember years ago someone told me I should take caution when it comes to love I did. The song kind of shows and represents what I mean by rebuilding from brokenness. Um, I think it's important to know that. So I definitely love the song because it has a positive message in that way. And now when all is done, there is nothing to say. You have gone so effortlessly. You have worn, you can go ahead. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful voice with us, Lasea. Thanks so much for tuning in this week, y'all. Our first episode, our baby's growing up. That all makes sense. Anyways. This show is brought to you by Coach as part of their Dream It Real initiative, all about supporting the next generation and their dreams for the future. To learn more, head to coach.com slash dream it real. The show is a collaboration between Coach, Pineapple Street Media, and young people all across the country. Hey, oh, and, uh, and me, and me, shout out to me, hey. Also, you can stay in touch. Follow Coach on all the socials at C-O-A-C-H, and you can follow me on Twitter at Heaven Rants. H-E-A-V-E-N, rants. So if you like this, here's one thing you should do immediately, which is tell a friend and then tell their friend and then have their mama tell their friends, etc., etc. Sp- spread it everywhere, friends. <laughs> it's very important if you like this that you share it with a friend and also that you rate and subscribe to Dream It Real on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you may get your fine podcasts. Anyways, all right. Thanks, friends. Thanks, friends.